Before I begin, I ask you to leave your comments below about your thoughts concerning Bill C-76, the Election Modernization Act, which I will touch upon in this video. In part one of my series, Foreign Money, we saw how billionaire Americans were financing a large number of environmental groups in Canada to engage in the tar sands campaign to destroy the Albertan oil revenue while they invested and got even richer on American oil companies. The purpose was to take down the competition so they alone could make an even bigger fortune, which is also the reason they pushed for support of the green energy industry in our country. But this is not the first time that these billionaires have influenced decisions in Canada. They have done it in the past, and they are doing so today, and they will do it again in the future. We turn our attention to Lead Now, a political activist organization that describes itself as, Lead Now organizes campaigns that build and defend a just, sustainable, and equitable Canada. Their campaigns have actively been undermining our democracy, not improving it. They are another organization that has taken money from the Tides Foundation. Tides, during the 2015 election year, donated $1.5 million to Canadian third parties. So who is Lead Now? Who started this organization? The group started in 2010, and the two co-founders are Jamie Bigger and Adam Shiletsky. Bigger is only one of the two who currently sits on the board of directors. Since then, Jamie Bigger has gone on to serve the Board of Directors for the World Wildlife Fund, who also receives grant money from the Tides Foundation from 2007 and 2012. This is not the full story, however. One of Lead Now's founding advisors is Ben Branzel. Branzel, before he came on to help set up Lead Now, was involved with Citizens Engagement Laboratories. In the position of Director of Strategic Incubation, was former Director of New Media for Barack Obama. Branzel is also connected to MoveOn.org, where he serves as advocacy director from 2004 to 2006. MoveOn.org has been connected to Lead Now, having worked on a number of campaigns together. Let's look at Citizen Engagement Laboratories. CEL, which is its acronym, began in 2008, has played a role in Tatar Sands campaign, which began in 2008, the same year as CEL. CEL is funded by the Tides Foundation. In 2011, Branzell came to Canada to help establish Lead Now. In my last video of the series, I referred on several occasions to Vivian Krauss, who has spent the last 10 years or so following the foreign money flowing into the environmental movement and political activist organizations. On June 6, 2018, she appeared before the Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs on Parliament Hill. In this meeting, she singled out Citizens Engagement Laboratories specifically as one of the main influencers on our elections. I have clipped and edited the audio from that meeting to the most relevant parts. So as you may be aware from some of the articles that I've written, there was a significant extent to which non-Canadian influence uh, had an impact in the 2015 federal election in our country. Um, I've reported this on extensively to Canada elections, um, but what I would just sum up for you briefly is that there are at least three US-based uh, organizations that have claimed credit for uh, having had a significant influence in the 2015 federal election. Two of these are Corporate Ethics International, based in San Francisco, and the Citizen Engagement Laboratory, based in Oakland, California. How do we know that these, that these American organizations influence the outcome of the 2015 federal elections? Well, we know this because they've told us in writing. I'll cite one example. In the 2015 annual report of the Online Progressive Engagement Laboratory, that's part of the Citizen Engagement Laboratory, its executive director writes, and I quote, that he writes, um, referring to the year 2015, we ended the year with a Canadian campaign that moved the needle during the national election, contributing greatly to the ousting of the Conservative Harper government. That's a written statement by the executive director of a non-Canadian uh, organization. So how did they do that? Well, the C Citizen Engagement Laboratory has a project called the Online Progressive Engagement Network, OPEN for short, and it had a program called Strategic Incubation. And that program helped to create, launch, and back behind the scenes, a Canadian-based uh, organization called Lead Now, based in Vancouver. 
Lead Now, with the support of Open, ran a Get the Vote Out campaign in the 2015 and 2011 uh, federal elections. In the 2015 federal election in particular, they ran a campaign that targeted conservative incumbents in 29 ridings. In some of these ridings, it stands to reason that this group had an impact. For example, in Winnipeg, in the Els Elmswood Transcona uh, riding, where Lead Now had full-time staff for more than a year, as far as I'm aware, the incumbent was defeated by only 61 votes. Bill 76 aims to close some of the loopholes that have allowed non-Canadian influence in our federal elections. I regret to say though that unfortunately I think that the way the bill stands today, what happened in the 2015 election would be able to occur and reoccur and I don't see that this bill has been changed in the ways that it would need to in order to deter and in fact make illegal what happened in 2015 from happening again. After the 2015 federal election in January of 2016, the spokesperson for lead now, Amara Posian, who is currently running for office in the Ontario provincial election, she traveled to Australia where she was given an award by the American organization for helping to defeat the Conservative Party. So that's the type of thing from right from, from the get-go, from creating the original organization uh, to continuing. And then, just to give you another example, Canadian uh, members of LEAD Now went to Australia okay. to help on the American uh, campaign in Australia, so it's not just Canada. Krauss brought up the Online Progressive Engagement Network. From here, I will refer to them by their acronym, OPEN. Branzell is also connected back to OPEN, where he worked as a director. The group describes itself as, OPEN connects groups to each other so they can share innovations, technologies, analysis, and lessons learned. These connections speed innovation and magnify impact. The group is founded by the CEL as well as a few other groups. They say they are a project that comes from an amalgamation of five different organizations from the US, Canada, the UK, Germany, and Australia, but it is primarily focused in the US. However, I have been unable to figure out which organizations are the founders. Open did state in a job ad in 2014 that they were going to be working with Lead Now in creating advertisements for the 2015 federal election. Between the tech companies such as Google, Facebook, Twitter, and more, it is activist groups such as these that are truly influencing and manipulating our elections, and Lead Now is helped by foreign entities. This is why auditing this group from top to bottom is necessary. On their website, they list both LeadNow and MoveOn.org as partners with their organization. CEL is one of Democratic Alliance's top recommended organization. The Democratic Alliance is connected back to the Center for American Progress, a group founded by, a group founded by Democrat John Podesta, linking them back to the Democratic Party. CEL has received $1,320,000 in funding from the Open Society Foundation, George Soros' personal foundation, as well as from Tom Steyer, who, as mentioned in part one, has founded the Tar Sands campaign and one of the Democrats' top political donors, giving away $120 million in the U.S. midterm elections. Steyer, through his super PAC Next Gen Climate Action, gave CEL $100,000 in September 2015. Tracing back Lee Now's finances can be difficult because they have been secretive as to where the money comes from. On their website, they claim, quote, Our launch in 2011 was funded through personal savings, family, and friends, and about 15 founding donors, most of whom donated around $100 each. In 2016, 74% of our funding came from our community chipping in a few bucks. We received 46,416 individual donations from Lead Now members, and 2,827 members chipped in monthly. The remaining 26% of our funding came from vetted like-mind organizations and donors for specific campaigns that are aligned with our community's top-ranked priorities." End quote. Lee now has admitted that as much as 20% of their money comes from outside of Canada. After some investigation, I managed to pull up Lead Now's election advertising report from Elections Canada. In this report, they state how much money is contributed to the group how many contributors, as well as a cost breakdown to some of their biggest contributors for the purpose of advertising in the 2015 election. There was a couple of interesting names on that list. 
One in particular that stood out to me was Margaret Atwood, the well-known feminist author of The Handmaiden's Tale. They also have been given donations from two unions, the Provincial Building and Construction Trades Council of Ontario for $25,000 and the Canadian Building Trades for $20,000. Rupert Duchenne also contributed to Lead Now. Duchenne is the former CEO and president of Amia Corporation and a member of the C.D. Howe Institute, one of Canada's biggest think tanks, in which he had the opportunity to rub shoulders with some political influencers, including Dr. Bob Bell, former Deputy Minister, Ontario Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, John C. Crow, the former Governor of the Bank of Canada, Philip Cross, former Chief Executive Analysis, Statistics Canada, and John Curtis, founding Chief Economist, Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade, as well as many more individuals. Ken Johnson has also donated to LEAD now. Ken Johnson isn't some big executive or millionaire, he is a professor from the University of Ottawa. I thought it was interesting to add Johnson in because it shows how many of the professors in the universities in Canada are hardcore lefty political activists. When we look back at Lead Now's requirements when they first started up, they required $16 million over the first 10 years. They have refused to say who gave them the startup money. We do know for a fact that they are funded by the Tides Foundation. They were not listed in the Tides Foundation grantee list that I have come across, but so far I haven't found any since 2012, but I've heard it's because they discontinued doing this in 2014 for any international donations. Lead Now only began in 2011, but there is enough information out there to prove that they received the money from the George Soros Foundation. This money has come both directly and indirectly from Tides. In 2014, they received $78,546 directly from Tides. The Sisu Institute, a Canadian-based group, was given $25,000 from the Tides Foundation, which they then turned around and donated to Lead Now. Sisu Institute has been listed on the Tides Foundation 2012 grantee list, receiving $223,000. Lee now has launched a number of campaigns targeting conservative parties, both provincially and federally. They are most famous for their Vote Together campaign that they ran in 2015. This encouraged Canadians in swing ridings to vote in tandem for the progressive candidate, whether that be NDP or Liberals, to beat out the Conservatives running in those ridings. According to their websites, they were successful in 25 of the 29 ridings they campaigned in. It was after this that people took notice to how many complaints were made to Elections Canada of foreign influence in our elections. To put it in perspective, in the 2011 campaign, Elections Canada received 12 complaints. In the 2015 election, they received 105 complaints. The allegations claim upwards of $6 million in foreign money went to influence the election results. This money was funneled through political advocacy groups such as Lead Now. This tactic has been used in order to bypass Canada's election laws concerning limits on political donation as well as to circumvent advertisement laws. Lead Now was named personally in these complaints. This campaign was not a popular one amongst most people even amongst their left-wing parties. Many saw it as an undermine of the electoral process. This anti-Harper Vote Together campaign was criticized by the Canadian Union of Public Employees, CUPE, the federal New Democratic Party, and the Green Party leader, Elizabeth May. Lee now considered themselves a progressive movement, so to receive criticism from both the NDP and the Greens must hurt. Due to these complaints, an investigation was launched into Lead Now to see if they had broken any rules concerning the foreign funds they received being contributed to the 2015 election. In July 2018, the Office of the Commissioner of Canada's Elections announced that they had found no evidence of the Elections Act being breached by Lead Now. This information didn't come out until late October 2018. The real problem here is the rules that are allowed under the Elections Canada concerning third parties. We need to change to the rules governing third parties. As it stands, third parties can receive unlimited funds from foreign donations as long as these donations are received six months before the election writ is dropped. The law also states that they cannot use these foreign donations for election advertisement. This has even been stated by Yves Cote, the Commissioner of Canada Elections. 
One of the issues with the way that the law is structured is it is nearly impossible to tell whether these foreign funds are being used to influence our elections. So long as the third parties stay within the spending limit, then they are in the clear. Even so, these foreign funds from groups such as Tides and Move On are still used to shape third parties into the activist movements that they want to push for policies that these foreign groups want. A good example is the Tar Sand campaign, which Li now has been active in. Tides has pushed these activist groups into destroying our own oil fields for the benefit of billionaire individuals from the US. The same thought process can be applied to politics. These third parties will advocate for political parties that benefit their foreign donors and their rich individuals behind those foundations. If we look at this from a business perspective, then it sheds more light on the problem. In the business world, a corporation is beholden to their customers. However, not every customer is equal. The business will always put more care into the biggest customers. For instance, if a company sells computers, they'll be quicker to react and solve any problems of a customer who buys the most computers, the most hardware and software, such as an office building that requires hundreds of these machines. They'll be more responsive to this office than they would for an individual who will only buy one computer. This is because the larger customer brings in the most revenue and are most likely going to keep coming back to purchase more. The same can be said for those foreign groups financing lead now. They are most likely the biggest single contributors to the activist group, which will in turn ensure Lead Now will address their concern and advocate for the policies that will keep these large contributors happy and their money flowing. To sum it all up, the large donations to Lead Now corrupts them from within to become the pawns of the Tides Foundation, MoveOn.org, CEL, and George Soros. They don't work for Canadian interests, they work for Soros' interests. The other problem is that a lot of what Lead Now did during the 2015 campaign was not considered advertisement spending. Spending money on polling in different ridings is not considered advertisement spending, which means Lead Now can spend a higher amount to figure out which ridings to target. Calling electors, canvassing door to door, sending an email to someone who has donated to your group or is a member of your organization are all actions that are not considered political advertising. This section of the law also protects unions from recommending a certain candidate to their members. The real damage that these third parties cause is not during the election period, but the times in between the election period. How they conduct themselves, who they lobby, and what political activism they engage in all goes further to shape the political landscape. On December 13th, 2018, Bill C-76 received royal assent. This is the Liberal Party's bill that amends the Canada Elections Act and it does very little to close the loophole that benefit third parties. Let's look at the loopholes that are available for these third parties. One, they are still allowed to collect money from unions and corporations. Parties and candidates are not. Two, there are no limits on how much money a wealthy individual or organization can send their way, whereas the annual limits on contributions to each political parties or to candidates and riding associations is $1,575. Third, spending limits for third parties apply only to election advertising, which means they can spend freely on such things as door-to-door -door canvassing and public opinion polling. First, the new legislation does nothing to address the foreign funding coming into groups such as Lee Now. Second, it actually expands the amount of money that can be used by these groups. Before the amendment, Third parties could use no more than $150,000 for advertising and no more than $3,000 for advertising in specific writings for a party or a candidate. After the amendment, they can now use $350,000 in advertising, but are also allowed $700,000 in pre-election periods and $7,000 per riding in pre-election periods. Pre-election periods is the time between when the election date is announced and when the election begins. The amendment states that third parties cannot use foreign funds for advertising, but this is a small change. Before, a third party could use no more than $500 in political advertising. The amendment prohibits the use of foreign funds in advertising completely. While I do agree with withdrawing all foreign funding for advertisement, this is a very small change while they are allowing the third parties a much larger contribution per election, meaning groups such as Lead Now can recreate the Vote Together campaign in the next election only on a much bigger scale. They were active in the Ontario election that took place in 2018. 
The group was vehemently against Doug Ford and were orchestrating a campaign to keep him out of office. Since then, they have had a political hard-on for all of Doug Ford's policies that a significant amount of their campaigns today is specifically targeted at the Ford campaign. This has included fighting against Doug Ford's attempt to downsize Toronto City Council, the cancelling of Ontario's cap and trade, and even going as far as to fight against Ford's attempt to kill the sex education that at best is considered an indoctrination tactic into the LGBT community and political correction itself, and at worst was under the supervision of a convicted pedophile Deputy Minister of Education Benjamin Levine who was convicted on three counts of child pornography, including making written child pornography, counseling a person to commit sexual assault, and possession of child pornography. He has also been accused of sexually grooming his own children. During the Ontario election in 2018, the group campaigned in favor of Andrea Horwath's New Democratic Party to win over Doug Ford's Progressive Conservative Party. They started up the hashtag NeverFord. This hashtag, funny enough, is also used by people who are upset with Ford vehicles. When you look through this hashtag, you can even see that the Unifor Union, the largest union representing journalists in Canada, some 12,000 of them, support the Ontario NDP. You know, Doug, fuck you. Lee now attempted to make a campaign of phone calls where they hung up on PC voters and encouraged progressive voters to get out and vote. This paragraph from the Toronto Sun article tells us all we need to know. Lead Now is trying to call 50,000 people in Ontario by June 7th with one simple message, don't vote for Ford or the PC party. They currently have phone banking events, group calling essentially, set up in Belleville, Toronto, Mississauga, Hamilton, Brantford, and plenty of small towns. The crazy thing is, none of this activity counts as third party election activity under Ontario law. Each of the 50 registered third parties can spend $101,800 during the official election campaign on advertisement. Adam Shiletsky is one of the co-founders of Lead Now. He was a senior policy advisor to the Kathleen Wynne government, but resigned just before the election was called. He is also listed as Lead Now's financial agent on Election Canada's 2015 third party advertising report. Amara Poisson is Lead Now's 2015 election campaign manager but she ran as an MP for the NDP in the Don Valley West riding, Kathleen Wynne's riding. The PC Party of Ontario asked Elections Ontario to open an investigation into collusion between Shedletsky and Poisson. It would seem like this would be a cut and dry case. I reached out to Elections Ontario on Twitter to ask them if there was any investigation into Adam Shedletsky and Amara Poisson, but they refused to confirm or deny this stating they do not comment on whether or not it has received a complaint or whether or not it is investigating a matter. This was the answer I expected, but I thought it was worth a try. Despite the campaign against Doug Ford that I have shown, I encourage everyone to take a look through Lead Now's campaigns because they have set up a lot more against Ford. Their obsession with the man is a little sad. In Vancouver, the group's recent activities include a push for a new voting method to abandon the first-past-the-post system in their provincial elections and implement a new proportional representative voting system. This ultimately failed. It is clear that the proportional representative system would benefit the NDP who, along with three green MLAs, have formed the provincial government. As I stated earlier, they were also involved in the Tar Sands campaign. They even took action against the Kinder Morgan pipeline. One of their petitions was even against Kinder Morgan being given government funds. The hypocrisy here is unbelievable, considering that Lead Now is one of the recipients of the Summer Jobs Program. The fact that they receive foreign money for political activism apparently allows them to pass Trudeau's value test for the grants. Lead Now helped take down the Enbridge Northern Gateway Pipeline. They have been fighting against the Keystone XL Pipeline and were on the front lines against Kinder Morgan. My theory, which seems to be shared by someone like Vivian Krauss, is that Lead Now is a proxy group of some of the progressive movements from the United States. It was established to push their agenda here in Canada. They have extremely close ties to several organizations and people who help set up these organizations. 
This tactic has been very effective as proven through the Tar Sands campaign and campaigns such as Vote Together. They are able to manipulate the political and social climate, but not for the betterment of our country, but for the monetary gains of these foreign entities. What is still unclear to me is whether they do this deliberately and knowingly, or whether they truly believe that they are receiving the funding from groups and individuals that support them in their cause. These third parties are used as money launderers. They receive the funding from the foreign entity, then funnel that money towards another third party who can then work for the foreign entity. But it cleans the money supply in the process by mixing that money with funds already received. It also makes it more difficult to trace this money back to the original source. The new legislation, Bill C-76, also known as the Election Modernization Act, does nothing to close this loophole. It is the Liberal Party's legislation to make it appear as if they are doing something when in fact it does nothing or at least very little to prevent these problems from happening in the future while guaranteeing that Lee Now and others have a large budget to run political advertising campaigns that we saw in 2015. Some disagree with me, saying it provides much more transparency to the political process and third parties. What do you think? Leave your comments below to let me know what your thoughts are about Bill C-76 and please like and subscribe and, even more importantly, share this video so we can get the information out.